Today on The Joy of Editing, I'm pulling out Topaz Studio 2. This is episode number 66 of my Creative Toolbox series. Sit back, relax, and stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Thank you for joining me again today. Today, I had to pull out Topaz Studio 2, which I like to refer to as my creative toolbox. And I'm sure a lot of you out there still love Topaz Studio 2. Now, I realize you can't get it anymore. And if you're listening, Topaz, a lot of us out here love Topaz Studio 2, and we would really appreciate an update. You had something really great here, and I think... You need to refresh it and bring it back. And those out there watching this video today, if you feel the same way I do, please let me know in the comments section below. Maybe Topaz will see your comments and see how much people really love this product and want to see it brought back or at least updated. And by the way, if you're interested in any of the Topaz products, I have affiliate links in the description below this video. Just click on those links and you can purchase Topaz products. When you use my links, I make a small commission and this helps me to keep tutorials coming your way. When you use my links, I really appreciate it and I truly thank you. Well then, let's go ahead and get started. This is going to be fun and this is pretty easy today. I'm just using this stock image of a flower and I went ahead and duplicated the background layer because I never like to send the background layer into any plugin. And so what I do at this time is come up here to filter and look for Topaz Studio 2. Click on Topaz Studio 2 and launch it. I wasn't sure where I wanted to take this image, but I wanted to take an artistic approach with this. So what I did was clicked on add look. Now, if you don't know where to take an image, try add look. There's tons of looks that you have with Topaz Studio 2. And right now I'm under the look category of abstract. But if you click this drop down, you have all these different categories right here. And I just started going through and started clicking on some of these different thumbnails. Okay, like here's one, that's abstraction one. Wasn't really crazy about that. Here's abstraction two. When I got to abstraction two, I thought, mm, this is interesting. Now I realize it doesn't look good right now, but I decided I'm gonna play with this one and see what I can do. Now I do wanna say this about looks. When you click on a look, it may be using one or several different filters. And you won't know how many filters it's using until you actually click apply. But I want you to turn your attention to this amount slider. Now, every one of these looks will be in a group, and I'll show you here in a sec. But this amount is an opacity slider for the group that the look is in. And again, it may have one filter or several filters. You never know until you click apply. I'll start out by pulling back on this amount slider just to bring back some of the underlying image. And I think I'm gonna come to right there, 50%. And I think that looks good. I think there's enough artistic effect here that I'm satisfied with it. I'm gonna click apply. And now you'll notice we have an impression filter inside of this group here called abstraction two. Now, if I click on impression, I could come down here and make any adjustments here to any one of these settings inside of this filter, but I'm really happy with it. Like I said, this is gonna be an easy one. You could go back and watch a lot of my Creative Toolbox series episodes, and I have, this is number 66, as I said at the beginning of this tutorial, so you can go back and watch some of those episodes where I really get into the impression filter. But today I'm just working with a look and I like what I have so far. And as I study this image, I'm thinking maybe a texture on top of this painterly look would look really nice. So I'm gonna come up here this time. I'm not gonna click add look. I'll click add filter. And then I'm gonna come down to this stylistic group and click on texture. And we have tons of textures that come with Topaz Studio 2. By default, you can see we have a layer opacity of 50%. This does control the opacity of the layer of this texture filter. Now I want you to notice that we have a group. Right now I'm on all, so I'm seeing all the textures and I could slide down through here and see all these textures or you could click this drop down, and you can sort by borders, custom dust, scratches, double exposure, light leaks, textures, whatever. But I started out on all and then we also have categories like this, all the different textures. And by the way, you can load your own textures into Topaz Studio too if you want to. 
but they do give you a lot to choose from. Now, also very important with textures are blending modes. And right now we're on the normal blend mode. And if I click the drop down, you could hover over these different blend modes and see how these blend modes react with the actual texture itself. And a lot of times I like to use like overlay soft light, maybe hard light or vivid light, or sometimes even linear light. These can all be good, but you see how the image changes when I hover over these different blend modes. I'm gonna go back to normal for now because I have not yet picked out a texture. And again, I have group set also. These are all the textures inside of Topaz Studio 2. And as I scrolled through, I tried different textures out. And the one I really liked was this one, Crazy Blue. So let me click on this. And there you can see Crazy Blue. And you may say, well, geez, Dave, that is crazy, but what are you gonna do with that? Well, let me show you. I'm gonna make the image smaller because the first thing I wanna do is click on this Edit button because we can change the size of this texture. And there's some edging on this texture. Can you see on the left and on the bottom? I don't want that on there. So I'm gonna come to one of these little circles. I'm gonna click and drag this out and make this texture larger. And then you could move this around like this. This. I still would like it larger. I'm going to click in this circle and drag up. And then if you click inside the transform box, you can move it. And now I'm going to move this into position. And I think I want it. Well, let me move it up like here. I think right around here looks pretty good. And then to accept that, just click edit again. And now I know it still doesn't look good, but you'll notice there's a lot of blue in this texture, which is messing up the colors of the image. And I don't want that. So I'm gonna click the drop down for the blend modes and change this to luminosity. And now that will not affect the colors of the image, but it's really way too strong. So I'm gonna take this opacity and I'm gonna pull it to the left a good bit and I'll take it right there, 0.15. So now if you come up here to this texture layer and click on the eye, you can shut that texture off. Here it is without the texture and here it is with it. And I really like it. And now what I'm going to do is if you left click on the image or anywhere in this canvas area, left click and hold with your mouse, there's the before. And then when you release that left click of the mouse, here is the after. I have one more thing to do to this image and that'll be in Photoshop. So now we're gonna send this back to Photoshop. To send it back to Photoshop, just come up here to the menu click accept and that'll send you back into Photoshop now here we are in Photoshop and here's my layer right here now it's always a good idea to rename your layers just so you can keep track of what you're doing because you might want to do some further editing in Photoshop but I'm just going to do one thing to finish this off I'll come down to the bottom right side of the interface and we'll click on this button to put a layer mask on this layer and that layer mask is active. And I'll type my B key to get a brush tool. And with a nice soft edge brush at like 30% opacity, I'll paint with black paint on this image right here, which will in turn be painting on this mask just to reveal some of the original image back through. So right now I have white paint. If I type my X key, I will get black paint. And what I wanna do is just paint back some of the original image on the flower area, just like this. Maybe down in here, a little bit over in here, and up into here, just like that. And maybe a little bit more right in there. Okay, so now let me shut this layer off. Here is before and here's after. If you want to disable this layer mask, if you hold down your shift key and click on the mask itself, you can see this is what it looks like without the mask. Hold that shift key down again and click on the mask. And here it is with the mask. And I think that looks really good. And I'm really happy with the way this one turned out. It started out looking like this, and now it looks like this. A little more whimsical, a little more fun, and I like it. Well, there it is, everyone, and I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. If you haven't pulled out Topaz Studio 2 in a while, if you have it, pull it out and dust it off and get creating with it. And don't forget to leave a comment if you want Topaz to keep updating this product or making it even better. I think they're really missing out if they don't. If you enjoyed today's tutorial, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. Click all so that you'll receive all notifications. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly, and I will see you all right here next time. But until then, happy 
editing.